In this lesson, you're going to learn how to find the least common multiple involving variables. So first, what I want to show you is a simple example involving just two numbers like 14 and 20, and then we'll apply it to find least common multiple with variables. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find out what are the factors that, of the number. And when you talk about factors, what we're talking about are what are the numbers that multiply together to give us 14? Well, you can see 14 is like 2 times 7. And with 20, we know 20 is 4 times 5, and we know that 4 we can break down into 2 times 2. So you're breaking it down into the smallest components, the prime factors. Then what I like to do is I like to write it in the prime factorization notation. So we've got 1, 2, we've got 1, 7, we've got 2, 2's times 1, 5. Now what you want to do when you find the least common multiple is follow these steps. First factor, then take the factor that occurs, not the least, it's called the least common multiple, but we want to take the one that occurs the most. So here you can see we've got one, two, two twos. So we're going to take the one that occurs more, two twos. Here we have one five, no fives. So we're going to want to take one five, one seven, no sevens. We're going to want to take the one that occurs more, one seven. Now if we multiply these together, we've got two squared is four, times five is 20, times seven is... 140. So what that means now is that imagine if we had two fractions like this, say there was a numerator here, and we said, oh, I want to get a common denominator. That common denominator, that smallest denominator that we could find where 14 would go into evenly, 20 would go into evenly, would be 140. Okay, so let's jump over to example one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at eight. Eight is really like four times two, and four is two times two. So you can see this is really like two cubed. And 20, we already did that over here, that's uh, 2 squared times 5 to the first. So we want to take what occurs the most. We've got three twos here, two twos here. We're going to need three twos. We're going to need one five. There's no fives here. And here we've got x squared. That's like two x's multiplied together. Here we have one x. We're going to take the one that occurs more. Here we have three y's. Here we have five y's. We're going to take the one that occurs more. So if we multiply this together, 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8, times 5 is 40, x squared, y to the fifth, and that's going to be your least common multiple. Or if you're thinking about finding a common denominator, that's like your lowest common denominator. Now, for number two, this one's a little bit more challenging because what we have to do is we have to, see these are monomials, like one group. This is a binomial, this is a trinomial. What we want to do is we want to factor and see what this is made up of. So x squared minus 9, this is what's called a difference of two squares. And you can factor it as a sum and difference pattern. See, sum is add, difference is subtract. So x plus 3 times x minus 3 gives us back x squared minus 9. Over here, we have a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1. We just have to ask ourselves, what two numbers multiply to negative 12 but add to negative 1? That's going to be negative 4 and positive 3. Now, here's where we want to take whatever occurs the most, right? So we can say, well, we've got 1x plus 3, 1x plus 3. It's a tie. What do you do in that situation? Well, you're just going to need one of those, okay? So just it's a tie for 1 there. Here we have an x minus 3, no x minus 3. We're going to need whichever one occurs the most, which you can see there's 1 here, so that's 1. And then we have an x minus 4, no x minus 4. We need 1x minus 4. Now, I don't have to write these 1s here because anything to the first power is itself. But just to show you, all these multiplied together represents the lowest common multiple or the common denominator if you're trying to combine these into like a, a fraction with a common denominator. If you want to see how to apply this least common multiple to finding common denominators and combining rational expressions, adding and subtracting, follow me over to that video right there and we'll dive into some more examples. I'll see you in that video.